Hi, Neo4j is a graph database that you can run inside a Docker container. Today, I'm going to show you how to set that up and get started. To follow along, I'm assuming you already know what Neo4j and Docker are, and that you have Docker installed and running on your system. If you need help with either, check the on-screen links or in the description below to help you get started. Neo4j's official Docker images come in a couple of flavors. The first choice you have is between which operating system you want to use as the base image. One option is Red Hat, which is meant for commercial and enterprise use. And the next is Debian, which is a open source and community maintained operating system. Debian is the default and it will be the example I'll use later today. There are also two Neo4j licensing options. One is for community and the other is for enterprise. The community edition is open source and free to use. The enterprise edition is meant for commercial and enterprise use, but you can download and use it for experimentation and getting to know how to use Neo4j. The enterprise edition has a few features that uh, aren't available in the community edition, namely things like online backups, the ability to cluster, and role-based access control. For today, I will be demonstrating with the enterprise edition. Here in the official Neo4j Docker Hub entry, you can see there are a number of different uh, images available to you dating back to version four. Now, prior to August, Neo4j used a semantic versioning scheme and after August switched to a calendar versioning system. So the latest version is actually uh, 2025.09, not uh, 5.x. Also, if you go to the official docs, you'll see a truncated version that just lists the different OS versions and whether community and enterprise. Uh, and these are the latest. So again, today I will be using the Debian Enterprise Edition. I'll demonstrate how to get started using both the Docker run command and also using a YAML file and Docker compose. All right, so starting off with Docker run, we'll just do Docker run. First thing you're gonna do is name this container image and I will call this Neo4j Docker. Next, we're going to assign the ports that we want available on the system. So don't forget that the first number here is the port on your local system. And the second number here is the port within the container. Uh, I have a tendency to forget uh, which is which, so I thought I'd just mention that. Okay, so 7474 is the port for the HTTP interface to uh, log into a Neo4j browser instance. We will also want to open up 76 Eight, seven, which is the default port for Bolt. So this is for applications to interface with the Neo4j database. Say if you're using the Python package or an MCP server, uh, Bolt interface is what you're gonna need. Now you could probably get away with just the 7687 for the Bolt um, if you don't want to use the browser interface. But since I will demonstrate with it, uh, I'm gonna open up both ports. Next, the first environment variable we're gonna add is auth, so Neo4j underscore auth. And here you will put in the username and then the password. Now I believe Neo4j has to be the username uh, by default because that is the user assigned with the admin rights to the database. And then password, of course, you can replace this with uh, any uh, password you would like. The next environment variable I'm gonna add is for Neo4j plugins. So the Neo4j plugins will allow the container to pull down uh, additional plugins by itself and put it into a plugins folder. Otherwise you would have to do this manually and then uh, insert it into a persistence folder. So one thing to note here is you need to wrap this into a string, but it is a list of the different plugins you would like to enable. The minimum plugin you'll need is APOC, which stands for Awesome Procedures on Cypher. This is needed if you want to run something like uh, MCP servers, which is what I'll demonstrate with later. So, so we'll add that. And some other options you may want to add is Bloom, which is a no code interface for Neo4j. Also Graph Data Science, which contains a number of uh, Graph Data Science algorithms. I won't demonstrate that, but, but I'm just putting it here so you know how to install it. And the last one here is Gen AI. This allows for vector embeddings to be added to Neo4j properties. Next, I'm gonna add some volumes to the Docker container so that we can persist the data through multiple runs. So I already have a dedicated Neo4j folder. Um, so what I'm gonna do is reference that and I'm gonna put it into a Docker subcontainer. Now a data folder is the minimum um, persistence folder you need to add for the database to persist over multiple runs. 
Otherwise, whatever you were to add to the database would be destroyed every time this container were shut down and spun up. The next folder is for logs, for uh, if you want to debug any issues. Next, you'll want to add a plugins folder if you are using any plugins. So you, you'll need this folder even with the environment uh, assignment above. This is where the plugins will be downloaded and installed. So if you were to not create this, then every time you ran the container, it would have to re-download uh, all the available plugins. The last volume we're gonna add is for imports. The imports folder is where you would drop CSV or TSV files if you wanna do bulk importing of uh, data. And then the last thing we'll do is we will add the image uh, tag. So we got 09.0 and enterprise edition. And this will be bullseye. Okay, so that looks good. I'm going to run this. And you can see the Docker run created the persistent folders that we requested. And ah, one thing I did forget. So when using the enterprise edition, you'll need to accept the uh, enterprise license. So you need to add that also to the environment when you're using Docker run. So. Okay, so you can see where uh, using a YAML file uh, for editing is definitely gonna be faster. Uh, and we'll do that next. Okay, so now we've got the database up and running. What you can do is you can actually check on a number of things right from Docker. If you have Cypher shell installed on your system, you can actually run a command against the database directly from the command line. Running Cypher shell, and then add in the username and the password. And then you can pass a Cypher statement if you know Cypher. Uh, you can use this one, which is a simple Cypher statement for returning the count of all the nodes inside this database, which should return zero. Okay, we got a count of zero. So this Docker container is up and running with the database underneath uh, running. Okay, I'm gonna shut this down by using docker stop, you know, 4j docker. And then I'm going to remove this container and show you how to use docker compose. Okay, it's now stopped. So docker rm to remove this image. Great. Now down here, I've got a docker compose.yaml file already. And here, this is the same information that I used in the docker run. And to use this, you just do docker compose up and dash D for detached. Container is started and I can use the same command to check this database. Great. Okay, so now using the browser to interface with the database, what we'll do is we'll do localhost and the port is 7474. And you can see here, we've got a nice GUI we can interface with. So this is all preset for the right bolt uh, URL. So password was just again, password to start with. We can see here once we're connected, we'll see the local host and the database. Uh, again, it's an empty database and we can double check that again. Zero table, great. Okay, so now if I wanted to start working with it, uh, I would suggest using something like Claude desktop. Okay, and I've already pre-configured Claude to talk to a local database instance at that address. So here, developer edit config. Here we can see in its MCP server configuration, I'm using the Cypher MCP server and targeting that bolt address. So now I can start putting in data. So I could drop in files right here and have Claude import it for me, or I can just have it create uh, some synthetic data for me. So create three employees of a mock AR glasses company in my local database. Okay, that looks good. I'll allow the write. All right, so three mock employees were added, Sarah, Marcus, and Aisha, and I can double check that. And I can probably see a count of four, yep. And 
instead of the count, I'll just return all the actual nodes. And I can see here that we do have Aisha, Sarah, and Marcus all working for Vision Tech. And that is how you can run a Neo4j database inside a Docker container. Now, if you'd like to see how to push this image to a cloud service provider like Render, Google, or AWS, please post in the comments with your favorite cloud platform, and I will start working on that. My name is Jason Koo. Thank you for watching to the end, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.